welcome to the uh, first lecture of the Van Solis Day 2. As I mentioned in my outline, so this course is going to be about the second quantization technique to understand various basic phenomena in solid state physics. But before we introduce the idea or concept of second quantization, we should briefly review what we know in elementary level of the solid state. In terms of the quantum mechanics and the Hamiltonian of a solid state system in a most general format. Here is the universe of our solid state system. Uh, it's made of, as I mentioned in my outline, our universe of a solid state consists of a bunch of um, periodically, um, you know, um, array of atoms, and those atoms are made of ions and electrons. So these ions are kind of a big circle, which are uh, heavy particles, and they are charged. And but um, outside of the ion cores, we have many electrons surrounding this ion cores, and those ions are in a very orderly place in the lattice structure. So different materials have different lattice structures, like BCC, FCC, and so on. But this is just a, a simplest cartoon picture of a square lattice, where uh, we have many ions are sitting uh, in a periodic lattice like this, but there are many electrons surround those uh, ion cores. So this is our universe. So it looks simple, but not quite. It's not that simple as you think. Um, so most of the interactions are Coulomb interactions. So because electrons and ions are charged particles, so we have three kinds of Coulomb interactions uh, between different charged particles. So because we have electrons, they could be, you know, they are everywhere. Uh, they could be, um, you know, any lattice site, I or J, but, you know, different electrons can actually interact by Coulomb interactions. Okay, so that's the first uh, Coulomb interactions uh, that is between any two electrons. But, but this, this uh, Coulomb interactions between electrons are repulsive because uh, both electrons carry negative charge. So, so that they have repulsion between them. But we have another second Coulomb interactions that is between electron and ions. Remember the ion cores uh, carry positive charge and electrons carry negative charge so that they are attractive to each other. So therefore we have this um, Coulomb attraction between electron and ion. But the Coulomb attraction between electron and ions occurs most likely on the same lattice site, okay? Because that electron is actually very close to the iron core, but this electron is actually a little bit too far away uh, to actually interact with the neighboring ions. So the electrons most likely will interact with the ion cores on the same site. But they can also uh, cross interact with, you know, with the uh, further neighbor ion cores, um, but the uh, interaction strengths decay uh, very quickly. And we have a third kind of interactions, cool interactions, that is between, say, two ion cores. Again, just like uh, the cool interactions between two electrons, it is repulsive, and the cool interaction between two ions, again, is repulsive. Then you could imagine that you know, these neighboring ion cores can actually interact by Coulomb interactions. But this is just the nearest neighbor. You could imagine that this ion cores could actually, uh, you know, interact with further neighbor ions. And in magnetic materials, we, we can also have interactions between spins on different sites, which is the spin-spin interactions, okay? And in many cases, we actually apply external magnetic or electric field 
so that we could perturb the system and measure this magnetic response um, of this material. And we have also spin interaction. So the Hamiltonian of my universe is made of these pieces. Okay? So the first one is the ion parts of the Hamiltonian, and the second is the electron parts, and third is electron ion parts, and then this external field contribute to the Hamiltonian and the spin-spin interactions. So this is my universe, and all these phenomena that we are talking about in this course can be actually understood in this generic cartoon pictures. So everything is here. So all the phenomena uh, that you have learned in the solid state introduction is actually hidden here. Okay, it sounds simple, sounds naive, but it's not simple at all because many surprises can occur among different interactions of coolant type. So we will talk about that later. So let's just formally define all this uh, pieces of Hamiltonians that corresponding, corresponds to this cartoon picture. So the ion part of Hamiltonian is made of, uh, by quantum mechanics, the connecting energy, which is, you know, P squared over 2m, where P and m are momentum and mass of the ion cores. And I represent the side index, so you should sum over all this connecting energy um, of each individual ion core. And of course, there's the ion-ion interactions by Coulomb between any two, say, ion cores. Okay, ion J are side index of ion cores. So that's the ion part of Hamiltonian, which is sum over kinetic energy and moment, you know, the uh, potential energy in quantum mechanics. And the electron part consists of a very similar term, but we have a lower case of a P and lower case of mass for electron connecting energy, and also for the uh, electron-electron coolant interactions as a potential energy. And then we have electron ion um, you know, interaction, which is attraction, as I mentioned over there, which is between um, you know, the electron site I and the ion at site J, or position J and um, position I. Okay, so the external field includes the magnetic field coupled to the spins, or you could actually apply the magnetic field, sorry, the electric field coupled to the um, dipole moment. And the spin-spin interactions of the Hamiltonian has this exchange uh, interaction form that the Si and Sj represent the spin on side I and J, which can interact with each other uh, through those exchange couplings. And the exchange couplings comes from different mechanisms, such as the second order uh, hopping processes or um, other Hans rule coupling, and we will talk about that later. So, as I mentioned, Almost all the phenomena that uh, we discussed in this course uh, come from this simple-minded Hamiltonian. But what are the most uh, important phenomena? As I mentioned, the lattice can vibrate. The ion can actually move, uh, fluctuate back and forth with uh, respect to the equilibrium position. And that lattice vibration um, will lead to some energy. And we call this phonon energy. And so this piece of a Hamiltonian will lead to the phonon as a quasi-particle. So again, we will introduce the concept of a quasi-particle later, but this phonon here at this point is nothing but a quantized low energy excitations corresponding to the lattice vibration of ions. So that's it. Okay. So this will be one of our main topic uh, for this course, and of course, Many time in this course will be spent in this electron part of the Hamiltonian, which describes the ordinary metals where the electrons can actually interact by Coulomb. So there are many interesting phenomena associated with this HE, including the um, interacting you know, version of the 
free electron gas, which we call this Fermi liquid, which describes the ordinary metals. And we will talk about this Coulomb screening, the screening of a Coulomb potential over distance in the solid state material, which come primarily from this kind of hamiltonian. And as I mentioned, electron and ion can actually uh, couple through the electron ion potential. And therefore, the ions also have this phonon phenomena. And therefore, through electron ion potential, we have electron phonon interactions, as I mentioned. And this e electron phonon interaction will actually renormalize the electron band, also the phonon band structure, which will be addressed later. And this will lead to some anomalous phenomena, so-called cone anomaly, and so on. So you can see at this point, this simple-minded Hamiltonian already gives us very rich um, phenomena, including phonons and you know, uh, coolant screening, uh, from liquid, ordinary metals, and also electron phone interactions. And but this electron phone interaction will further lead to the pairing between two electrons called the Cooper pairs, which by condensing this Cooper pairs, we could get uh, the uh, superconductivity for or ordinary metals. And so that's the BCS theory of uh, superconductivity in ordinary metals. And, and finally, the spin-spin interactions in solids also explain many magnetic properties of solids, such as paramagnetic, ferromagnetic, antiferromagnetic, and diamagnetic, and so on. Okay? So this piece of Hamiltonian describes magnetic structures of materials. And in the magnetic long-range ordered materials, such as ferromagnetic or antiferromagnetic materials, the lower energy excitations of those magnetic materials are called the magnons. The magnons are kind of a um, spin flip processes in quantum mechanics, and in semi classical language, it is the spin wave. Okay, the spin can actually gradually change its direction like uh, like a wave, and such excitations are low energy excitations. But this is a semi classical picture. And in quantum mechanics, um, you know, this kind of a spin excitations consists of only the spin flip from, say, spin up to spin down state. And when we quantize this um, spin excitations in magnetic materials, we can find the energy uh, that is similar to the phonon, but it's not the same as phonon, uh, but we call this magnons as uh, low energy quasi particles of magnetic materials. To actually calculate something measurable, uh, we need to follow quantum mechanics, especially the uh, finite temperature st you know, the statistical quantum mechanics, where we could actually calculate observables, abstraction value of observables at any given temperature by this kind of a density matrix um, defined in the st statistical mechanics, where we could compute this partition function, which is nothing but the trace of this Boltzmann weight, e to the minus beta h, where h is our Hamiltonian. And once we compute the z, and we can actually very easily compute this excitation value of any observable, observable a, um, where a could be, um, for example, the magnetization, or you know, the current, or uh, whatever, okay? a spin moment, and so on. And following this statistical mechanics principle at finite temperature is the, um, the basic structure of our course that we study the periodic arrays, ions and electrons on the lattice, and they interact mostly by Coulomb, and sometimes uh, by spin-spin interactions. And, and then there are many, many interesting, surprising phenomena that could emerge at low temperatures. So, so before we end this course, we uh, you know today, uh, let me just introduce, say uh, again, or remind you two important particles called fermions and boson. So as I've mentioned already, the fermions are uh, the part quantum particles which carry integer you know half integer spins, like electrons you know uh, having 
uh, spin one half, and bosons carry integer spins like uh, pho photon, phonon, magnons. So the spin of these bosons are either zero, one, or two, or any integer value. So as you can see, that uh, we are, you know, describing the solid state system in terms of uh, low energy excitations of, you know, quasi particles which are either fermions or bosons. Okay, so we will talk about this elementary excitations, you know, uh, near the Fermi surface for uh, ordinary metals which come into play at low energies of ordinary metals, and those elementary excitations are called quasi-particles or electron hole pairs. And we will talk about that later, right? And so these are the dress electrons near the Fermi surface is an example of uh, the quasi-particles as a fermions. And as I mentioned, the phonons uh, are bosons, and magnons are also bosons. Electron-phonon interaction is actually the coupling between fermions and bosons. So these quasi-particles are either fermion bosons and fermion bosons satisfy different uh, quantum statistics. The fermion satisfies Fermi-Dirac distributions and bosons satisfies Bose-Einstein you know, distribution um, in statistical mechanics. So uh, we will talk about this different quasi-particles and their different quantum statistics and how this quantum statistics of um, you know, uh, quasi-particle fermions, quasi-particle bosons were affect the low temperature properties of solids. So that's our uh, next job. Okay, so I hope you get a general picture of what we are dealing with at the, at the moment. Okay, so by the way, to solve this Schrodinger equations of that many particles is actually an impossible task. So we need to find a clever way um, to actually study the low temperature, uh, you know, behaviors of the, those uh, uh, complicated materials, and those clever way is exactly the second quantization technique. So that means we, uh, it's not possible for us to really solve this single particle Schrodinger equation for that many atoms and electrons. For example, this number of electrons and atoms go like 10 to the 23rd that many atoms and electrons. How can it possible to really solve the Schrodinger equation for that many, elect, you know, uh, coupled equations, and it's, it's exactly mission impossible. So, so then we need to actually extract the most important ingredients at low energy, you know, and low temperature limit. And that most important ingredient is to count the particle number. Instead of solving for this individual Schrodinger equations, we need to count the particle numbers, and these particles are quasi-particles, as I just mentioned. So now you can appreciate the, you know, the deviation from the single particle quantum mechanics in solid state physics because we're dealing with many body systems. So these electron ions interact in a collective way, so they do not simply just follow, the, you know, they follow in principle the single particle Schrodinger equation, but as a whole, as a collection, there are new quantum phenomena emerges, and which cannot be analyzed by uh, solving the single particle Schrodinger equation. So these phenomena are called many-body phenomena. Okay, the many-body phenomena will be introduced, um, you know, uh, step by step, such as phonons and the screenings and electron-phonon interactions and magnum phenomena, and so on, okay? So these many-body phenomena is the fascinating phenomena in modern solid state, which could be understood only in terms of a second quantization approach. Okay, good. So uh, I guess that's enough for today. See you next time. Mm -hmm.